Hi guys, how are you? Welcome to this week's episode and today I'm going to be talking about your adrenals and cortisol and I'm going to be going through 10 foods to help you supercharge your adrenals. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Naomi Judge, I'm a naturopath and nutritionist and I help women connect the dot between their health, happiness and hormones. And the hormone today we're talking about is cortisol and how you can use foods to nourish your adrenals to regulate and balance cortisol and also which foods help with adrenal fatigue and also which foods help with a hyper stimulated adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands sit above your kidneys and your adrenal glands have many functions but one of the primary functions is synthesizing and making cortisol and cortisol is a hormone that's used in many functions in the body it's um, in balance it's really beautiful in balance it's an anti-inflammatory hormone in balance it regulates your circadian rhythm in balance it regulates your fluid your kidneys your blood sugar and essentially cortisol is one of the primary hormones along with adrenaline in your fight flight response so when the body goes into a bit of fight flight adrenaline and cortisol are produced your body then goes through some biological processes um, including kind of shutting down taking blood away from the digestive system putting blood into the muscles getting your glycogen stores out of your body out of your muscles and getting glucose into your blood supply that allows you to be more alive alert and then it allows you to run away from danger so that's one of the primary functions of cortisol as well as many other function and it, it works very nicely with the other hormones um, it's made in the adrenals it's made from progesterone so hence why many women actually have low progesterone when they're chronically stressed because progesterone is kind of at the top of the hormone cascade, cortisol at the bottom, and when you get stressed, when you're in hyper alert a lot of the times, your progesterone actually gets funneled from cortisol. So we've got adrenal fatigue, we've got beautifully balanced adrenals. Now beautifully balanced adrenals means you'll wake up, cortisol starts to spike, it starts 3, 4, 5 a.m., cortisol will start to, start to kick in. And what that means is, Cortisol is kind of waking you up from your deep slumber. Beautifully balanced cortisol will leave you nice and alert in the morning. Slowly through the day, you'll notice cortisol will start to dip. Melatonin will start to rise, six, seven, eight. So by bedtime, by nighttime, you're feeling sleepy, you're ready for bed and you have a great night's sleep. Now this is out of balance for many people and some people find that they wake in the morning and they're in deep, deep slumber and just cannot get out of it because the cortisol is just not kicking in. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. Another is that in the evening, cortisol, um, drops so quickly so at about six o'clock a lot six o'clock six p.m a lot of people are noticing that cortisol bottoms out and people after work get so fatigued you might get the dark rings around the eyes that extreme fatigue and it's like a blood sugar crash and remember that blood sugar and cortisol are so interlinked they're so connected that if you're not regulating your blood sugar then you're going to have these cortisol highs and lows it's not going to do what it's supposed to do so let's talk about about what it feels like to be in adrenal fatigue you'll have sleepy you'll be you'll be sleepy a lot of the time you'll be sleepy around 10 a.m. you'll be sleepy around 2 p.m. you may need stimulants so people with adrenal fatigue may feel like they need coffee tea they may feel like they need um, alcohol so something to stimulate you because your body can't naturally do that you may feel you have water retention issues so you may feel like you're holding on to water you've got swollen you've got painful joints if you've got that adrenal fatigue there are issues with the water flows in your body um, so swollen painful joints you might find that you get some weight issues you might find that you get kind of like a flabby kind of weight rather than being able to build muscle and that can happen with high and low cortisol extreme fatigue and also sensitivity to pain so you'll feel pain a lot more low libido and a telltale sign a difference between low cortisol and high cortisol is low cortisol you're um, you're low in sodium you are craving salt you are dizzy you might get that um, dizziness on standing you might get that kind of brain fog and um, fatigue
just turning the heater off. It's a bit hot in here now. But definitely that craving salt. You also might get that morning sickness, so nausea. And this will happen with a lot of women that are pregnant. You get the morning sickness. And the morning sickness isn't a symptom necessarily of pregnancy. It's a symptom of something else going on. It's just that in pregnancy, you have a different um, balance of hormones. And it's actually bringing this problem to light. So a lot of people with adrenal fatigue will wake up not hungry, will wake up with nausea, will get sick in the car on the way to work, will get sick in the bus on the way to work, won't be able to handle their food. And that's to do with the cortisol and actually the, the hypoglycemia as well when you wake up. If you've got low cortisol in the morning, you most likely have hypoglycemia. You might be a bit pale, you might wake up cold, you might wake up foggy, and you might wake up nauseous and really not feel like some food. So those are kind of the telltale signs and the slight differences between the high and low because some things are the same. So when you've got that elevated cortisol, you've got more cortisol, maybe more adrenaline running through the body. You'll have things like thinning of the skin. So you might notice the thinning of the skin. You might have more wrinkles. The high cortisol, it's um, catabolic. So it breaks down. It breaks down bone. So you might have osteoporosis. You might get broken bones easily. It breaks down connective tissue. So you might have that thinning of the thinning of the skin, you might have the sagging of the skin, you might have less collagen, it might not be as plump. You bruise more easily as well. So bruising more easily is a telltale sign. You're sitting down on a chair and you get the bruises just by that kind of pressure. It's not necessarily a big bang. High blood pressure. So high blood pressure versus low blood pressure. High blood pressure in um, elevated cortisol, low blood pressure in low cortisol. You get constipation, cravings for sugar, more sugar and refined carbs. You'll get those sweatiness, the sweaty palms and that kind of like clamminess. Um, and then cold hands and feet and um, headaches. So with the low cortisol, you might have overall kind of like neck pain and general pain. With high cortisol, you might get the high blood pressure kind of headaches, the pain in the head. So those are kind of the telltale signs. So let's just go into what foods are great, why they're good, and also what foods are better for one or the other. So seaweed, seaweed is fantastic. Seaweed um, is high in iodine, with that, which actually supports the thyroid gland and it supports the adrenals and iodine supports hormone synthesis. So hormones being turned from one hormone to the other, um, activating hormones, which help um, help the thyroid, help the adrenal glands. Iodine helps the pituitary to do what it needs to do with the stimulating hormones. So iodine is fantastic. Now another thing that's high in seaweed, and this can be good or bad for some of you, is seaweed is high in glutamate. Glutamate is a very excitatory neurotransmitter. It does make you um, excited. Too much of it can make you overexcited. Too much of it can give you heart palpitations. Too much of it can give you insomnia. So maybe don't go high on the seaweed late at night. But if you're in adrenal fatigue, if you're in that kind of fatigue, maybe you have got low glutamate. So things like bone broth, things like seaweed do help. So seaweed is that high glutamate. So if you're estrogen dominant, and remember I've talked about this before in estrogen dominance, you need to be careful with high glutamate foods. So mid-cycle, you may not wanna have too much seaweed. Weed. but a little bit of, of seaweed with the glutamate with the iodine helps to just stimulate the adrenals it helps to um, organize hormone synthesis it helps to organize the pituitary to produce your pre hormones to do what it needs to do in the body secondly cacao so pure cacao or your 95% dark chocolate now cacao has a couple of different ingredients in it's got theobromine which is a little bit like a gentle caffeine but it actually helps to stimulate the body it actually helps to bring down blood pressure so if you're in kind of an acute anxiety kind of an acute high blood pressure situation theobromine can actually help that Cacao is also high in magnesium, which is great for the adrenal glands, but it's more that kind of rela relaxation. It helps with blood, press with blood vessels. It helps to open up the blood vessels and opening up the blood vessels. So when you're in fight flight, blood vessels constrict. That causes high blood pressure. The dark chocolate has a theobromine in, which causes the blood vessels to open up slightly. And this is good in that, that, that kind of like extreme fight or flight. You want the blood vessels to open a little, little bit so it can get to the rest of the body. 
Okay, thanks for that question. I'll do, I'll, we'll go into the thyroid, but definitely I'll be talking about that at the end, actually talking about the importance of the thyroid and the adrenals and how they um, relate to one another. Um, now, of course, cacao is dose dependent. So I'm not saying eat a block of chocolate every day, but some people can get really great therapeutic benefits from a little bit, a little bit, you know, daily, a couple of times a week, just to help with that high blood pressure, just to help with the nervous system. So in adrenal fatigue, in adrenal fatigue, we have, um, in adrenal fatigue, we have aldosterone. And so aldosterone, aldosterone is a hormone like cortisol, and though they can both be low in adrenal fatigue. So cortisol and aldosterone are low. Now aldosterone helps to regulate your fluid retention, so your fluid. So when it's low, you'll have issues with your kidneys. When it's too low, think of dizziness, think of, um, um, think of um, low sodium, think of water retention and that kind of thing. So you're thinking that very um, low, um, just that general fatigue. So when our aldosterone is low, what you want to do, and when cortisol is low, what you want to do is you want to kind of up your sodium intake. You want to get salt in, and this is where salt will help. So salt will help to stimulate the adrenals, and it will help with that sodium balance in the body to give you a little bit more energy. So salt like Himalayan rock salt, salt like um, Celtic sea salt. Now, there are lots of, um, this is something that I haven't research and I haven't looked into and so I do need to do a lot of re a bit more research in terms of salt so there's lots of studies there's lots of people coming out now saying that salt is actually um is actually it's problematic because of microplastics in it so looking for salt sort of have been produced on kind of like land or in in um rocks such as Himalayan rock salt may be a better option. I can't determine that yet. Like it's not something I've seen studies in, but it's something I'm aware of. So it's something that I am going to look out for. But you know, when you're in fatigue, when you're in that low sodium, when your aldosterone and when your cortisol is, is low and you're dizzy, you're craving salts, you're thirsty all the time, um, this is your kidneys not being able to regulate the fluid. So when you're in that low state, you need more sodium, you need more salt, you need things like bone broth, you need things like sodium, and sodium in sort of like a natural sea salt. So using something like Himalayan rock salt and actually having a glass of water, especially if you get that morning fatigue, having a glass of water and putting a little bit of salt in that so it makes it into kind of an electrolyte drink um, is very, very helpful. So that's something that you can do, um, definitely. But that's why bone broth can help. And remember, bone broth as well is high in, high in glutamate. So if you're sensitive to glutamate, if you know it gives you heart palpitations, then you might want to rethink, particularly chicken. Chicken broth is high in glutamate. So, um, but definitely the sodium you can do. So soups. So three, sodium. Number four, get your soups in. So there's some beautiful soups and great vegetables that you can put in soups to help nourish and stimulate the adrenal glands. So you can put foods like green beans in. You can put foods like celery in. Tomatoes are very good. You can put broth in them. You can put sodium in them. And just this kind of soup helps with the adrenal recovery, helps with getting your energy back, helps with stimulating the aldosterone, stimulating um, the cortisol, and helping to regulate and balance them out. Now, of course, if you're in, a, if you're in an acute, if, if you think you've got high cortisol and you're in that, this acute, wired, tired, then you'd want to rethink that and what you'd want to do if you've got if you've got that is you'd want to look at um, taking more potassium so if you've got high aldosterone if you've got um, high cortisol you're more likely to have that high blood pressure you're more likely to have those headaches you're more likely to have the water retention so the swollen hands and feet the swelling around the belly and you're going to be holding on to so what aldosterone does is it encourages you to hold on to sodium uh, instead of releasing it out of the body where you get dehydrated you get dehydrated in a different way you're holding on to sodium and when it's high when you've got too much sodium and your aldosterone and your cortisol is high then you're more likely to have progesterone issues as well so that's just something to think about and remember when it's high as well one thing that's not indicated is licorice because licorice put your fluid balance out more. So licorice can actually cause more issue with sodium in your body. So that's if, you're, if your cortisol and aldosterone are very, very high. My favorite thing to do, and what I've found helps really well 
with elevated cortisol, with high aldosterone, with water retention, with too much sodium in your body. What helps really well, and that's, that would be constant thirst as well, is um, adding in more sodium. And I love doing cucumber juice. So actually doing a cold pressed cucumber juice each day you can also put a little bit of parsley in that as well because the parsley is wonderful at regulating the kidneys but a cucumber juice daily when you're in when you've got elevated cortisol when you've got elevated aldosterone when you've got lots of water retention when you're thirsty all the time high aldosterone and high cortisol you'll feel like you're drinking lots but it doesn't quench your thirst so you do you keep drinking water but it doesn't seem to do anything. So what you need to do is you need to get that little bit of potassium. Um, I love the cucumber juice. So just doing a cold pressed cucumber juice each, each day it really helps with that. It really does help with that. And this is why a lot of people do well on apple cider vinegar. vinegar because apple cider vinegar as well is very, very high potassium. So if you're in an, an adrenal fatigue situation, it's funny, it's, it's acid forming and we want, to, we want to form acid when we're kind of fatigued because too much alkalinity can cause more fatigue. So it's kind of that catch 22. But a lot of people find that apple cider vinegar works so well because it does regulate um, aldosterone and it does help to regulate your potassium and sodium ratio. So number six is high vitamin C foods. You know, foods that are high in vitamin C. So this is what tends to happen. When we go through stress, we go through a lot of stress, our adrenal glands will funnel and use all the vitamin C in our body. And this is why when we've got issues with cortisol, particularly high cortisol, we'll have immune problems. We'll get coughs and colds all the time. We might get skin problems all the time. We might have poor healing wounds because we've got low vitamin C. So you need that extra vitamin C. So you can get it from foods like red capsicum, you can get it from foods like berries, um, you can get it from foods like sweet potato, and you can also use superfoods. So superfoods like camu camu, natural vitamin C, um, and also, you know, acai and berries like that, that naturally have um, vitamin C in along with bioflavonoids. So bio vitamin C needs a bioflavonoids to absorb. So that's why we need that. We need that. Um, foods high in bioflavonoids are actually um, oranges and the pith of or oranges. That's why it's good to have, have those. And here's why as well. There is also an adrenal plan um, that's been around for a long, long time. And it's actually having a lot of vitamin, a lot of cold pressed orange juice in the morning. Now, I don't advise that simply because of the high sugar. I've seen that actually cause more problems, but some people do well on that, um, but it's not something I would advise. But definitely getting those high um, vitamin C fruits as well. So kiwi fruit um, and, 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 kiwi fruit and pawpaw as well. High vitamin C, just having a little bit of those, wonderful for the adrenal glands. Then of course magnesium, so number seven, magnesium is really specific for stress. It's really specific for the adrenal glands. It helps to regulate not only the adrenal glands, but the blood sugar. And for us to have balanced functioning adrenal black glands, we need to have balanced blood sugar. So um, magnesium helps a lot with that. So magnesium you can get from lots of different foods. You can get it from grass fed meat. It's particularly high in your leafy green vegetables and you can get it from kind of your nuts and seeds. If you suspect you have very low magnesium, you may need to supplement and do things like Epsom salt baths, magnesium sprays, that kind of thing, because we do need um, magnesium um, and it is it is common that we've got a deficiency so number eight one of the ones one of the foods that's amazing for the adrenals and reason being is when we've got issues with cortisol when we've got an imbalance of renin aldosterone cortisol adrenaline we tend to get more inflammation in the body and we tend to get more heart problems um, kidney problems and just inflamed body in general. So omega-3s, you know, fish like sardines, like your mackerel, um, like wild salmon, um, those kind of fish, your white fatty fish are wonderful for reducing inflammation. Um, the amino acid profile as well is great for your adrenal glands, but you wanna make sure you're bringing down inflammation. If you're feeling inflamed, if you know you've got some cortisol issues, then adding in that fish will be really helpful to reduce inflammation. 
Um, the DHEA also helps with your brain health and anything that helps with brain helps the pituitary and the pituitary is kind of the master gland that helps to regulate your hormones um, down in your glands, down in your adrenal glands. So nourishing your pituitary, using um, good fats, using fish is really important. And of course, when we have more of those omega-3s, we actually get a better um, functioning um, neurotransmitter, so your serotonin. And serotonin also helps to nourish the adrenal glands. It actually helps to balance them out, it helps, it helps prevents us from getting that kind of adrenal fatigue. So that's another one that can help. So that's number eight, your fatty fish. Now, number nine, I wanna talk about blood sugar because we'll talk about blood sugar and your thyroid and your adrenals. So it's kind of like this beautiful um, trio. Without one, the others won't work so well. So you need to have them really nicely balanced. So starting with blood sugar, then the adrenals, then the thyroid. If your blood sugar is out, it's gonna affect your adrenals, it's gonna affect your thyroid. If your adrenals are out, it's gonna affect the others. If your thyroid is out, the others then have to scramble to try and keep you in balance, but it's difficult. So what you need to do is you need to first make sure your blood sugar is stable. If your blood sugar is not stable, you're gonna be having inflammation, you're gonna be having fluctuating insulin levels, fluctuating glucose levels, you're gonna be having um, maybe insulin resistance, you're gonna be having growth hormone problems and lots of inflammation, lots of issues with cortisol, lots of issues with adrenaline, if you've got insulin resistance, you might recognize this one symptom of waking up at 3 a.m. with a start, and that's basically your blood sugar dropping out, and so your body thinks you're in danger, so it initiates adrenaline, and initiates cortisol, and you kind of wake up with a start. So that's definitely a telltale sign. So you need to be regulating your blood sugar. Cinnamon is wonderful. Cinnamon is such a beautiful aromatic spice. It's fabulous for helping your blood sugar. So I would definitely introduce cinnamon into your diet I would use cinnamon um, daily in your foods you know you can either put it in savory foods you can put it in your smoothies you can put it in your muesli but I would definitely have cinnamon because cinnamon does help with insulin resistance and once we can stabilize that blood sugar we can strengthen our adrenals and protect our thyroid and that's the real key here so that takes me on to food number 10, which is coconut oil and coconut products. So coconut, um, the oil itself really helps with hormone synthesis. It helps to balance out your testosterone. It helps to balance out your cortisol. It kind of acts as a precursor. It goes in there and helps the hormones to turn into whichever hormones they want to turn into. In terms of testosterone, if you've got low testosterone, it helps to bolster the testosterone. And often with adrenal, hyper adrenal function, we have low testosterone and strange levels of DHEA as well. So coconut oil can really help with that. Coconut oil is a yang food. It kind of helps with energy. It bolsters energy, it gives you energy helps to get you into ketosis and ketosis can help to stabilize your blood sugar and ketosis can also help to stabilize your adrenal glands so when you're in a very fatigued state ketosis can kind of um kind of rev rev your body up um, and it can start to do what it, it what it wants to do. Now, if you're in real hyperstate or you suffer from polycystic ovarian sy sy syndrome and extreme high testosterone, you'll want to be wary of coconut oil because it really does work. But if you need that em energy, if you've got adrenal fatigue and you want to kind of balance things out, using coconut oil is a great way to do that. So blood sugar, keeping blood sugar balanced is key. So a drop will cause a spike in cortisol and the cortisol will then go and get, go and, go and um, get the glycogen from your muscles, put it into your blood supply and you've got the high glucose. Once the glucose in your, in your blood supply, it causes those elevations of moods, it causes the cravings of sweets and it causes a thyroid to go haywire. And the thyroid, once the thyroid stops functioning, that's it, that's your metabolism. That's the last port of call for your metabolism. If the thyroid starts to slow down, your metabolism then goes as well. So I want you to really think about this. Think about the balance of your adrenals. Think about all the foods to nourish your adrenals, but really focus on that balancing of your blood sugar. If you if you sense or you feel that your blood sugar is just not balancing through the day, if, you, if you're a type of person that needs to take snacks in your bag, if you're craving carbs or sugars all the time, 
Um, if you find you need carbs or sugars for energy, if you find you're waking at 3 a.m., if you find you're getting weight on around your belly, all these things, if you find you get hangry or irritable, um, then you really need to start looking at it toward your diet to balance that blood sugar because once you balance that blood sugar it's going to help stabilize your cortisol levels and what we want as I said at the start we want really nice beautifully functioning adrenals that produce your cortisol in the morning high through the day it goes lower and lower till you're a bit fatigued at 9 10 o'clock at night ready for bed you have a good night's sleep and then you'll wake up at about six o'clock the next day that's really what should be going on um, with your cortisol levels um, through the day and through the night and that will actually help to stabilize your melatonin that will then help to stabilize your estrogen levels and help to rebalance your hormones in general so I think I have, um, does exhausted adrenal glands cause and affect the thyroid? Yes, it does. So as I've mentioned, blood sugar is key, then your adrenals, then your thyroid. If your adrenals are not working, if cortisol is too high, it, it blocks other hormones. So if cortisol is elevated, it will block thyroid hormones. So it will stop your T3 converting, your T4 converting to T3. T3 is your active thyroid hormone. So that's what happens there. That's why it's so very important to um, stabilize your adrenals, definitely there. So yes, um, exhaustion can affect your thyroid gland. This is where iodine can help. Um, definitely using seaweed is one of the top foods to help with exhaustion, one of the top foods to help with your adrenals and your thyroid gland. And definitely using something make like magnesium as well. And recognizing if you have hyper, over, over, overworking adrenals, you know you're in the hyper, you've got, have you got high cortisol or have you got low cortisol? You'll know low cortisol, extreme fatigue, apathy, tiredness, um, you know, joint joint aches, um, th you know, th low blood pressure, dizzy, pale, elevated cortisol, you know, are you hyper wired but tired, um, problems sleeping, um, high blood pressure, headaches, that kind of thing. So just try and identify what's going on for you and you'll be able to see it through the day and then you know how to, um, how to, um, work on it, what foods to introduce, what foods not to have, that kind of thing. So I hope that was helpful. Those were the 10 foods, just going through them again. So um, we had seaweed, we had cacao, we had sodium, um, we had broth or soup, we had high vitamin C foods, high magnesium foods, fatty fish like your sardines, cinnamon to help balance blood sugar, and coconut oil to add a bit of yang and to help with ketosis, to help the pituitary, and to help with brain health. So I hope you found that helpful. I hope you can start implementing those to get your adrenals balanced. So thank you. If there's any other questions, pop them below, and I will see you next week. Bye.